All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at some more properties of parallelograms. Now, in the past, we talked about three. I'm going to add one more. All right, so we've talked about sides being parallel. We've talked about angles, opposite angles being congruent, and consecutive angles being supplementary, angles next to each other adding to 180. All right, we're going to add one more rule in here, and I'm going to put this actually at number two. Opposite sides are congruent. So now I know two things about opposite sides. Opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are congruent. Now the other rules are still the same. The opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary, all of that stays the same. All right, but what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some problems that deal with some angles and deal with some sides. The other thing we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at solving for x. So in the past, we just set it up and we solve for the individual, individual angle. What we're going to do today is look at how do I set up the equation, how would, I, how would I solve it by hand or type it into Desmos. All right, so let's take a look at this first problem, solve for x in this parallel. The first thing I need to do is say, what do I know about what's being told, to, or what, what I have here? I've got two angles, and they're opposite each other. So what do I know about opposite angles? I know opposite angles are congruent. Now that's going to tell me how to set this thing up. So I'm going to set it up. 57 is equal. Remember, congruent is like equals, OK? So 57 is equal to 3x plus 24. Now if you want to, we could solve this by hand. We could subtract 24 on both sides, and I get 33 is equal to 3x. And then I divide by 3 on both sides, right? Doing my inverse operations all the way is equal. 11 is equal to x. Now, if you like solving by hand, that's great. That's the best math way to do it. Now, if you want, if you have a hard time solving by hand, let me show you how we can solve this um, how we can solve this in Desmos. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our equation here. 57 is equal to 3x plus 24. I'm going to type it in here. 57 is equal to 3x plus 24. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom out. And there's my solution right here at 11. And so notice that gets me the answer just the same. All right, so let's try another one here. OK, let's solve for x in this parallelogram. Now. The temptation here is, is what a lot of people like to do. They say, ah, we just stick an equal sign in between these two because that's what we did for the last one. Well, wait a second. First off, do those angles look the same size? Is this angle right here, that's acute, and this one right here is up too. So those don't look the same size. So we shouldn't be setting them equal to each other. What do I know about angles that are next to each other in a parallelogram? I know they add up to 180. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 9x minus 17 plus, actually let's do this, let's, uh, let me try to move this down here so we have some space, 9x minus 17 plus 13x plus 21 is equal to 180. Notice I didn't set them equal to each other, instead I added them to equal 180 because that's what I know, I know they add up to equal 180, so that's exactly what I did, I put a plus sign in between them, but an equal sign equals 180. Now, once again, I could take this and I could use this um, in Desmos, okay? So let's, let's actually do, uh, so it's 19x minus 17. So let's do this in Desmos and then we'll talk about it if we were doing it by hand. 19x minus 17 plus 13x, let's see what else it said, 13x plus 21 is equal to 180. If you don't have the equals to, it's not going to make any sense. Okay, so if I add them up, set them equal to 180, notice I get a decimal of 5.5, okay? And that would be our correct answer. Now, in most of the problems today, you're not going to get any decimals, okay? Let me just talk about this real quick. If you are dealing with this by hand, remember the first thing you need to do before you start so solving, um, you need to combine your like terms. You need to simplify the left side of the equation. So if I was solving this by hand, I'd say, all right, 9x plus 13x, how many x's do I have? I've got 20, uh, 22 x's, and then 21 minus 17, that would get me 22x plus 4 is equal to 180. And then at that point, we'd solve it just kind of like we solved the other one. We subtract the 4, we divide by 22. But if you're doing this by hand, 
do be careful you're not doing 13 minus 9 and 21 plus 17. If we're staying on the same side of the equation, we're going to use the same signs. If it's a minus sign, we're going to subtract. If it's a plus sign, we're going to uh, add. If we're going opposite sides of the equation, we're doing opposite signs. We're doing a subtraction instead of addition. So just wanted to show you that. All right, let's do one last one. We'll set it up. Okay, solve for x in this parallelogram. Notice what's going on here. I've got a 12x minus 40 and an 8x minus or plus 12. Notice how these are on the outside. That means I'm not dealing with angles anymore. It means I'm dealing with sides. And I know opposite sides are equal to each other. So I'm going to set this thing up. 12x minus 40 is equal to 8x plus 12. The nice thing about solving for sides and angles and parallelograms is if they look equal to each other, they almost always are equal to each other. So look, these sides look like they're the same size, okay? And so I could plug this into Desmos to solve. 12x minus 40 equals 8x plus 12. I'll do it by hand here instead of Desmos. I'm going to subtract 8x on both sides. But you could plug this into Desmos if you wanted to. Is equal to 12. I'm going to add 40 to both sides. So I get 4x is equal to 52. I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides. So x is equal to 13. So that would be my final answer. So use Desmos if you want to. Solve it by hand if you want to. You could even use Desmos to check. But remember your rules. This is the most important part. Okay? Opposite sides are parallel. They're also congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. And angles next to each other add up to 180.